invitee. WordCamp Asia. Oh, excellent. Wow, right. Look at this wonderful crowd out here. Yeah. And, you know, I'm used to be standing when I speak. Huh? Feels a little different sitting down. But uh, I hope you guys are full of energy. Are you? OK. I don't know that I believed them, Nirav. <laughs> <laughs> are you all high energy? Yeah. All right. OK, good. So, uh, you know, it was 2014 when I met Matt for the first time in person. Wow. And uh, we were at WordCamp San Francisco and taking selfies with him. And it was like a fan moment for me. You know? Yes. WordCamps are like wonderlands for me. You have so many of your heroes here, people that you've seen online, people that you've learned from, and you've only seen them online. And you come to a WordCamp, and you can take selfies with them. You can shake hands with them. That's the opportunity you don't get anywhere else. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to miss that yeah. today because Matt is not here. Yeah. But I think, you know what? Matt is probably missing us more. Oh, yeah. I'll say yes on his behalf. Because I know, you know, he rooted for WordCamp Asia. Yes. And uh, he's been behind this to make this happen. And unfortunately, he's not here. So I know that while we miss him, when we bring him on, can we welcome him such that he feels that he's here? Yeah, that he's not sitting somewhere else, but he's with us. Can we please do that? Yeah. So let's welcome Matt. Can we have Matt in, please? Yes. I don't think I've ever been more scared of anything in my life. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Whew. So yes, there, there. If you cannot walk down these stairs, flag down one of our runners. Where are our runners? And they have a wireless microphone for you. Yes. So when you're at the mic, say your name, where are you from, and what is your involvement in the project? And then go ahead and, and ask your question. Try to make it a question. And try to be crisp. Yeah. Can you all um, see and hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Yay! Uh, well, let me repeat what I said earlier, which was I am so excited uh, even to be here virtually with you all because to have a new continental scale work camp happening in Asia um, is amazing. And it's been a, a dream of mine and so many others for, for many, many years. So thank you all for making it happen. Really appreciate that. And if you want to take a selfie with me, uh, now is the perfect time. <laughs> Hi. Yes, it's going to be an Aussie though, because we are also here. <laughs> well, I'll be in it. So uh, that's true. That's what I, I guess. I'll I can't wait to uh, attend uh, in person next year and would love to see you all at future work camp. So I'm so very, very sorry I couldn't make this one. Um, heartbreaking to me, but thank you so much for the whole team for setting up this virtual way um, that we can still connect uh, via video. Thanks to those organizers right, over there. So just resuming what I was saying. Uh, one question, we'll be alternating between pre-submitted and live questions. Uh, if you're in the line, and if your question is already answered, feel free to step away. But before doing that, if you want to say hello to Matt, you're welcome to do that. Yeah. Uh, we may have to moderate or intervene at times, just in the interest of time. All questions are important, but we need to make sure that we can get maximum questions answered. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, good to go? Good to go. All right. So, let's start on this side. Please introduce yourself and ask a question. 
Hello. First question. <laughs> yeah, I'm first question on all three continents. So, I'm Milana Tsap from Serbia and from the documentation team. And I have a question um, on behalf of the documentation team, but also all make teams. Uh, we have a foundation that is helping and supporting WordCamps, and that's wonderful. Thank you very much. But my question is, could we have something like that for make teams? Now, volunteering and contribution and open source, it's all beautiful, and we don't have, uh, we cannot afford that kind of romantic thinking because we are too big. It's not sustainable. So I understand that logistic of you know, uh, uh, supporting all volunteers all over the world is a nightmare and maybe not possible. I don't have answers, I have only questions. But if we could have something that would help teams, you know, sponsor something, I don't know, uh, per project or something like that, and every team, besides what they are doing for WordPress, they also have a lot of other things that they are doing. Uh, so documentation team is not just writing documentation. We have so many things around it that we are working on, and we we are paying tools by our own money. I'm paying a tool by my uh, sponsored money from XWP. And if we could have some kind of support for those kind of things, that logistic that we are doing to be able to do what we do for WordPress, that would be so helpful. So if that's possible, I, I would like to see that while I'm still on, uh, in, inside the project. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Um, there were a few layers there, so I'll try to work through them. Um, on tools you're using, I'm, I'm curious what tool that you're, you're having to pay for and that there wasn't an open source uh, alternative. So what is that? Uh, yep. Uh, that is a tool that I build onboarding form for documentation team to help people, uh, you know, find a way and uh, discover all the roles they can do in documentation team. And that involves uh, conditions. So based on what you answer, uh, I create condition to give you the list of the roles that you can work with. So there is no free tool for that. Uh, and I don't have enough time to build it myself. So, you know, we have to balance time and, and uh, what we can do. Uh, so there are tools that can simulate something like that, but the logistic is not uh, completed, so I had to pay for it. Actually, you pay for a WordPress plugin, or was it like a third-party no, no, no. SAP? It's a third-party service. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, a few things there. One, like part of what we want to do on WordPress.org and with the meta team is uh, try to use our development efforts to try to create open source versions of everything you need to build a community like WordPress is. So um, hopefully someday, like, I think it's great. Let's be pragmatic. So, and thank you, I guess, XWP for paying for that tool that you used. Um, if anyone else needs any tools, um, you know, we, we don't mind paying for software if we need to. We're always looking for an open source first, if we can. Uh, and many uh, companies are very happy to donate their services to us, uh, such as Slack does currently for our .org Slack. Um, but uh, if there's ever something you need, please don't hesitate to get in touch um, with the sort of uh, meta team um, if you need a tool sponsored for getting something done. On the broader issue of being sponsored or not, um, I will say that uh, the foundation side of WordPress, as you know, has had no employees ever since it started. So no one uh, gets paid by the foundation. We do do grants and scholarships and sponsorships and things like that, um, but it's not really set up to be an employment entity. Uh, WordPress has always tried to be a place where people can come together regardless of who employs them or how they get paid or whether they want to get paid or not and uh, work together on something. Um, I realize that this isn't for everyone and that a uh, number of folks as part of their five for the future contribution uh, companies sponsor people. You know, Automatic has over a hundred 
people that we sponsor full time uh, that just contribute to various elements of WordPress. Um, and you sounds like work for XWP, a number of other companies. Yoast is a big one that sponsors a ton of great people. But I, I would strongly disagree with you that um, people need to be sponsored or that sponsored work is better. I think that op open source uh, is the idea of coming together around a cause. It's not about um, being paid for the work. It doesn't mean the work is value, isn't valuable. In fact, it's, as we say, both free and priceless at the same time. Uh, but yeah, I don't see that changing um, for the foreseeable future, that the foundation will ever have any employees. It's really just meant to be a intellectual property holding, uh, you know, doing things like events and places to facilitate places where we need a, an entity, but um, not an employment entity now or in the future. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, I I'm, didn't say that sponsored work is better, just to make sure. Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't say that, and I don't think that. Uh, I'm just think uh, it's more sustainable when we have something, a project to do, like this uh, uh, redesign that has been done. It's marvelous, but it took a lot of uh, time, and sometimes we need things to be done faster, so, you know, maybe having some kind of support would do it faster. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so you then identified another issue, which is in many areas, we are moving, I think, a lot slower um, than we should. Uh, I would love to say that paying people would <laughs> necessarily help them go faster, but I have lots of experience in, in working um inside automatic with projects that went too slow even though everyone was paid so i think there's something else there that we need to identify and get a lot better at um around how we are if i had to guess i would say that um too often we are doing particularly design by committee and trying to develop a consensus and everything and it would probably be better if we just chose a single person to be a decision maker and said, even if we don't all agree with it, let's just start with that person's decisions and use that to move things through faster. And uh, and then we can always iterate from there. But right now we're taking a very long time to get the version one out. And um, I think that's not conducive for creating great products or experiences or anything. Um, I wrote an essay on this on my blog uh, so ma.tt, if you look for, I think it was called 1.0 is the loneliest number. I talk a lot about sort of the idea of design by committee, consensus, and um, yeah, creating great user experiences. Uh, if I'm super honest right now, I'm, I'm pretty embarrassed by a lot of what's going on on wordpress.org, the website right now. I think the information architecture, the design, the menu system, everything is um, not up to the standard of what WordPress itself provides, which is world-class software. So in, inside the core software, I think that we're doing pretty decent and in many places, fantastic job of many things, but we haven't yet been able to translate that to the projects surrounding it, um, including WordPress.org itself. So it's very, very much on my mind and something I've been talking to Joseph a lot and um, thinking about. And you just heard my best theory <laughs> that perhaps we need uh, more Sometimes we call them DRIs or directly responsible individuals. Um, maybe try that approach a little bit more than necessarily the uh, the consensus which we've been attempting now for several years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, at this time, you know, as I was hearing the answers and questions, uh, something else popped up, and you know, Subhash's Chatterjee uh, from the community had a very interesting question. And I could relate to that as a, as a parent of two school-going daughters. And he said, is there any way that we can start WordPress, you know, education, uh, using WordPress, teaching people to code with WordPress, and uh, at school level? That was quite mm -hmm. interesting. And as I think of it, you know, if you imagine the impact this could have over the long-term future, it's just amazing. So, um, any thoughts on that? You know, how do we get kids start contributing early, get to use WordPress early? 
Josefa, if you're up for it, I'd, I'd love for you to take this one because I think you're more familiar with how the product we're doing all over the world there. So I'm just going to double check. We're asking how to get WordPress taught in schools yes. and how to get WordPress very young. Okay. <laughs> so first things first, my favorite question. This is a thing that I worked on before I even was sponsored to work on WordPress by Automatic. I want WordPress as a software and as a way to collaborate with one another yeah. to be in schools. I think it's something that we have to be able to teach people. WordPress can teach you how to use all of your 21st century skills well, but also it is able, if, if you're contributing, you're able to learn how to work across cultures, you're able to work yeah. um, across global boundaries, as all of you are aware. I've worked with some of you for like five or six years, and I've never been in the same room with you before today. And I think that's fascinating. Yeah. So I'm a strong advocate for it. And in my current experience of trying to get open source or WordPress into school systems, it moves too fast for them to be able to build curriculum. And if it's not moving quickly, then they are worried about this concept of open source. Oh. It's kind of, it's kind of like a, a power to the people sort of thing, and schools find that moderately alarming. So that's why we have not yeah. succeeded, I think, at getting that done yet. Um, but around the question of like how to get it to young users early, we are working on getting kids camp started back up. If anyone is familiar with that, it's uh, students who are 13 and younger. Um, they get to go to a whole day of sessions alongside a regular WordCamp, and they get to learn basics of WordPress, basics of basically project management. And for some of them, like the start of their entrepreneurial spirit is there. Um, but then also, we ha I've been having a lot of conversations with our attendees this, uh, this weekend about how to do that also for like basically teenagers, because teenagers don't want to do anything that their parents want them to learn. And so we got to figure out a way to help them get that uh, experience as well. So strong advocate, lots of difficulty getting it done in my current experience. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that you mentioned kids camps, and um, perhaps that's actually something that could be part of future WordCamp Asia's as well. Yes. That'd be awesome. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, is there a Slack channel uh, or a place for people whom they're helping? You know, younger folks get involved with WordPress, coordinate or share what they're doing? Yeah. It's, I don't know if there's a specific channel for like kids camp and such, but we do have the community team in the Making WordPress Slack where you can join the working groups for those things. Uh, but also, if you just want some self serve content that helps expose your students, your children to WordPress, you can also go to learn.wordpress.org. There's a lot of content there as well. Oh, and meetups. Don't forget What's meetups. That? So Anyone I can go to a meetup event. Uh, maybe we'll call it like a hashtag kids camp or something. And um, you know what? I'll start that right now. I'm on a computer. So this awesome. is actually a very awesome. stage. Make it uh, so. So, and then folks who are interested about that, you know, because the, in education, no one understands better than a parent or teacher who's directly working with the kids. And so I think uh, the folks who are, or attempting this are going to have the most wisdom and experience there. And if they can start sharing in a peer to peer way, what's worked and what hasn't, um, I think that would be kind of the best way to scale this up. Yeah. Awesome. So, Yogesh next. Yeah. As we're talking about learning and learn mm -hmm. WordPress, uh, you know, I had another question from uh, the community earlier, Lux Murray Appen. Uh, he said, uh, how can designers and developers upskill themselves? Now, we have some great material on learn.wordpress. Uh, what else can we do so that in you know, all these new things, it's easier for people to learn all yeah. that? Yeah. Matt, do you want to answer or do you want me to answer? Uh, well, I just made the kids camp panel. Okay. So I'll answer it because he was busy. <laughs> on the WordPress. Do you want to this one? Go ahead. Oh, no. Um, so, so the question is how do you help? 
designers and developers uh, level up their skills. Yes. I think one of the best ways in the WordPress project that you can do that is actually participating in a do action hackathon. So those hackathons are put together by the community, but through the WordPress Foundation. And you can learn all sorts of skills required to, to work inside that, um, in, to work with WordPress. And you're actually building websites for people, sometimes creating content for companies and nonprofits. And so you get a lot of hands-on opportunities and, and that pragmatic work that helps you to remember it. So that's my recommendation. All right, so shall we go to another question here on the right hand side? Michelle has a question. Michelle, do you have? Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um. One moment. Okay, perfect. So, Michelle Frechette with Stellar WP and Post Status. Nice to see you, albeit from the other side of the world. <laughs> With the wave of layoffs and hiring freezes that we've seen lately in the WordPress community, what do you think that we as a community can do to create more jobs in our ecosystem and stop the anxiety and fear that comes with the layoffs that we've seen? Not a softball question today, I know. <laughs> never, never softball questions Not for me. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. One moment, Matt. Oh, no. One second, Matt. Oh, now we can't hear you at all. Okay, hang on. He's given a good answer. We can tell it's an excellent answer. <laughs> oh. Maybe you oh, can we can read it. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Oh. Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, one thing that I found consistent uh, through economic boom times and recessions is that uh, we try to create more value than we capture. And so uh, as we continue to just stay close to our customers, stay close to people doing real things in the world, um, I think actually WordPress can benefit from recessionary times as well because uh, we provide one economic agency where people can do things themselves. People, everyone can be an entrepreneur with WordPress. Um, businesses always are gonna need more customers and they might become more price sensitive. You know, if they find they're paying hundreds of hundreds of dollars at Shopify and a WooCommerce site could do it for one tenth the cost or they're spending too much money on Wix and Squarespace. So I would encourage, you know, people with WordPress skills to look at, businesses in their area or ones they have contact to, um, particularly who might be spending more on some of these other services and look at the opportunity to bring the WordPress because <laughs> you could probably give that uh, business or nonprofit or whatever organization it is a better website and uh, save them a ton of monthly cost as well, which would be really great. I, so I feel like open source really shines in recessionary times. Uh, in terms of as a community, I feel like the relationships that are formed at work camps and online and by people working together and uh, by contributing to open source is really one of the very best ways um, to also be connected to jobs as well. And, um, you know, from the very first days of WordPress, you know, when I was starting uh, Automatic, who did I look to? Of course, the people I was had already been working with <laughs> building uh, early versions of WordPress and MU and folks like Donica. Andy Skelton and Ryan Bourne, like these were folks I had already had experience working sort of shoulder to shoulder, uh, making things with. And so participating in an open source project, if you find yourself having uh, some extra time is a great way also to build your portfolio, to make professional contacts and network. Um, so alongside other things you might be doing, like polishing your resume, improving your portfolio, I would say, I know as someone who's hired thousands of people, um, you know, one of the first things I always look at is, is our open source contributions. I can't think of a developer application I've gotten in the past 15 years that didn't have a GitHub link. So uh, contribute, contributing and participating in something um, is a great way to fill those holes in your resume as well. Yeah. I'm gonna add on a thing yeah. here for the folks here and watching 
at home or wherever you are. I think also an important part of this answer is that you all are a step ahead of everyone who isn't here already, right? You came here to learn about WordPress or to teach others about WordPress, and you are making those connections that Matt's talking about, where you are finding other people that you can do uh, fun projects with, learn new skills, or just partner and come up with a new business entirely. And I think that that's excellent. I'm so glad that you all are here. Uh, for that reason and many others, so. Yeah, see, when, when that conversation is going on, it, I'm just kind of in the presence of the contribution that WordPress has had on this community, the yes. Asian community. Uh, it's created so many jobs already. I mean, you know, like 2010 is when we started store apps and doing all this WordPress work, and I didn't even imagine where this could reach. Right. And I meet so many people every day. WordPress has changed so many lives here. Would you agree to that or not? Like, has WordPress changed your life? Yeah? Yeah. Mine, for sure. Yeah. No. So it does change lives. It may take time at times. There are ups and downs, right? And life goes through the stages. But you know, this community has contributed a lot back, and it's also received a lot. Uh, on, on that topic, you know, when we're thinking about the, you know, the roadmap for 2023, is there anything specific or particular, any announcements or updates that you think this community needs to know about WordPress, the project? Before we get to that, should we take another audience question? Or? Sure. We could do that. Yeah, we have people lining up. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to this side, and then we can come back to yeah. that. Hi, um, my name is Yogesh. I am from uh, Bangalore, India. Nice and to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, my question is, uh, you know, in uh, recently we see that uh, there's a lot of upheaval in the tech scenario and um, things change rapidly, but when they change, a uh, lot of it affects uh, the people who are usually working in the open source, like when uh, Google went with Axe in, on the jobs, the first thing they cut down was their uh, open source contributions department. And then uh, on the other side, uh, Microsoft came up with uh, ChatGPT, yeah, very, very popular. But uh, they took it, they basically bought GitHub. They used all the contributions. And they closed source it. They say, no, n not really closed source, but they uh, monetized it. And uh, so we see that the um, tragedy of commons keeps happening out there. So as uh, WordPress um, is around 40, 42% of the web, how, does, uh, how do we avoid the, how do we make it resistant to tragedy of commons? Or how do we make the open source itself resistant to tragedy of commons? Mm. You had, you had a few really good things in there, so I'll try to address each of them. Uh, first, on, for technology like ChatGPT and other you know, large language models and other things, I think are absolutely the future. And we should be thinking about how we can leverage them to make ourselves more productive and uh, not try to fight it. So the best, that, but they also, we should recognize their limitations. Uh, the best essay I've seen so far, actually one of my favorite sci-fi writers, uh, Ted Chang, wrote an essay for The New Yorker called uh, Chat GPT is a Blurry JPEG of the Web. <laughs> it's a amazing analogy showing like how uh, these things learn and why they astound us in certain ways and also their limitations. But I 100%, just like you might have had a... IDE or something else that would help you with autocomplete based on reading the code and knowing the classes. Like imagine that times 10 and it's going to improve the quality and our ability to create software so quickly. Like there's articles and YouTubes online of people creating entire WordPress plugins in minutes, you know, yeah. using ChatGPT or Bing or other things. So I think it would be foolish to, to ignore this. And I don't see it as, um, I'm not sure how it's gonna play out economically. So it, I was kind of astounded. Uh, there are groups like um, Stable Diffusion, 
Matt, I'm going to have to interrupt you mid-thought. Oh, no, th th we're reading you. Never mind, continue. So uh, the best that I've been able to come up with there in talking to thousands of WordPress community members and studying the history of open source and, and economics and everything like that is a five for the future. So for those who aren't familiar, five for the future is basically yeah. the idea that has, um, you know, if you, if you are, you know, benefiting from WordPress in some way, like if it's changed your life, if you're making money from it, um, it's kind of like there used to be like these legal take opinion jars, like you could say, Take five percent back of whatever you feel like getting from WordPress, and um, contribute that back to the open source side. So uh, whether that's you know like a variety of ways that people can, uh, contribute, whether it's documentation, support, I I probably don't need to explain it to all people. Probably <laughs> doing it already by by dint of being at WordCamp Asia. But um, I feel like if we can continue the ethos, uh, us all benefiting a tremendous amount from WordPress, but also Taking a little bit, just five percent, <laughs> and you know, putting that back in the comments, that will help us avoid the comments. And it's certainly allowed us to be, I think, one of the most successful long-term open source projects so far. And when I see, uh, you know, our other open source projects and our cohorts, our competitors, or um, that haven't had as vibrant a community of us, it's generally been when they have had that social moray or norm of uh, contributing. And so that's why, uh, that's why we talk about it so much. It's also why we demonstrate it, why I do it myself, <laughs> by contributing a lot of my time back to WordPress and um, for companies in, that I'm involved in, both that I invest in or, or run like automatic, um, we take it very seriously now to the tune of over a hundred full-time people. So uh, yeah, I, we try to lead by example there, but I think anyone who's, who's really done it also can talk to the benefits of how contributing can uh, can benefit you a lot as well as the community. So I the good news is that I don't worry about it because it's in everyone's interest uh, for the commons to thrive with open source. And that's why when open source, the flywheel kind of gets going of contribution and the improvements in the software leading to more usage, which leads to more contributors, which leads to the software getting better. Um, it, it becomes kind of a, uh, world standard, if you will, much like WordPress is starting to. You know, we have 10 times the the number of domains using us as uh, the number two in the market, which is a proprietary competitor called Shopify. Um, so if we continue doing that, it doesn't mean that we don't need to like ruthlessly iterate ourselves and get better at doing meetings and collaborating and everything else. But like if we if we keep doing that, I uh, I can see WordPress. I could see WordPress being around not just around, but actually core to the, the fabric of the web a hundred years from now, you know? And I would love to attend a WordCamp Asia in my eighties or something like that. That's <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank, All right. You. Thank, All right. You. Thank, Thank you. 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 I do want to give a fast, where are you to hurry? If you want to know more, there you are. If you want to know more about the Five for the Future program, that excellent steward of that program is the person to speak to. Um, I'm sure that he will be made available out here <laughs> in the sponsor area. All right. Shall we take one more question? Yes. Yeah. This Hi, Matt. Good morning. Uh, my name is Vishal. I am from India, and we build plugins for WooCommerce. We have been doing that since uh, 2012. Uh, so yeah, it has uh, created a lot of livelihoods for me and for our team of you know 17, 20 people. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the onboarding process of the uh, self-hosted version of WordPress. So uh, currently, the uh, you know when we install when we download the uh, uh, the WordPress version, it, it 
it is meant to be for a developer or you know uh, someone who knows what's the database username what's the password and and those things uh, do we have a plan to change it such that uh, rather than all those details coming first we ask as to what is the kind of site that you are trying to build you know with this particular installation let's say you know uh, uh, maybe a physiotherapist is trying to build a blog or or someone you know uh, based on the domain that they want to use it for based on the purpose of the site uh, that's what we ask first and then you know uh, we we uh, follow up based on that instead of what is the theme you want to install what's the plugin you want to install uh, so yeah uh, do we have a plan uh, or anything in in that uh, uh, yeah in that uh, context it's a great question thank you uh, our plan has been to leave that to the folks providing WordPress as a service, whether that's the web hosts or you know, the WordPress and the SaaS type providers. And there's been a ton of innovation in that onboarding flow. And if you look at the, the Bluehost or the WordPress.com of the world, like there's a lot they're doing uh, to uh, experiment there. And uh, as to whether we should do that before as well, I'm open to it, but there's no reason not to. It's just been something uh, we've decided not to do so far. But if that's something that you're personally passionate about or want to spin up, we could definitely start to do some of that in core. Um, and of course, because it would be completely configurable, anyone who already has a custom onboarding would just turn off the bits of onboarding that they don't like. Um, but there's so much to do within like the kind of after the onboard uh, user experience, uh, you know, with the four phases of Gutenberg that we're working on, but also just all the rest of WP admin. There's just so much we can still improve. Um, that hasn't seemed like the, uh, the most crucial area. Um, it definitely appears that I think by, it's not that these parts are important. It's that we're bringing a lot of people on the WordPress every day. Um, it's that. I think a lot about that maintenance and that usability for how to customize the site that you want. And, you know, sort of picking a theme and a plugin only gets you so far. What we're trying to do with Gutenberg block themes is actually take it so that so much of what before you used to have to use a plugin or a theme for, we can provide a common block based interface for. And so my hope is that as Gutenberg gets further and further, like you'll basically start with like kind of a blank canvas and be able to use block patterns and other things to create a site just exactly like you imagine and customize it however you like. Well, right now, themes are basically kind of prepackaged versions of that. But I mean, it's not gonna be in the next couple of years, but maybe 10 or 15 years from now, you could imagine um, basically everyone starting with kind of a blank canvas theme or themes themselves just being collections of these patterns and uh, blocks. Okay. So I think that's kind of the answer to on board is at least that we're doing core. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Matt. That's an interesting perspective actually. Uh, and that kind of links back to contribution, right? Mm. You know, so what do you think could be some of the most impactful ways the Asian community in particular can contribute to WordPress in meaningful ways, uh, especially keeping the big picture goals of 2023 and beyond, like the next 10 years. Matt? Yeah, I would say that. Oh, did you want to jump in, Joseph? Can I start and then you do it? Sure. Great. So <laughs> I think, um, especially since you're here with uh, exactly the right people. Some of the things that are most impactful that you all as a community can do right now is number one, um, get uh, the, the meetup programs, your meetup events started again. That helps a lot with wherever you went, Yugesh. I don't know where you went with the five for the future question as well. Having more people attending these events helps us to onboard new users and onboard new contributors. So that's one thing. Yeah. And the other thing that is so incredibly important right now is um, translating our content that is on WordPress.org. The training content that's out there needs to be translated um, into all the 200 languages 
languages that WordPress core is translated into. Uh, and our docs as well, I think, could use some attention from a translation standpoint. So those are the three things that I would say you could do uh, right now. Now, Matt, what you got? <laughs> and, and by the way, normally, Josefa and I would be in person. Yeah. And we were kind of like we'd look at each other to know who was going to go first. So uh, since so we can't do that now, <laughs> please just, uh, feel free to jump in or interrupt me at any point if you want to uh, take something. Um, I was going to say exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. That's perfect. You said it better. And um, I, it is true that outside of Japan, it feels like uh, many of the countries represented in Asia um, WordPress's adoption within many of these countries and languages is not as a must. It is in uh, English, German, Spanish, you know, some of these Japanese. So I would say that no one better than you know how to connect to the local community of you know, starting schools. Adults, developers, agencies, small businesses, colleges, universities, um, really making WordPress present in every single one of those and truly localizing it and translating it, not just in the language, but um, for the needs of that particular uh, culture and society is um, something that the folks in this room will be able to do better uh, than myself or, <laughs> or anyone else. So. Uh, that, I would say, is, is really one of the critical things um, that particularly love to see as we start to start to, you know, this is the first world candidate, but hopefully the first of very many. Um, okay. I'd love to see it develop a lot more. Yeah, the difference uh, between localization and I'm going to call out because you asked the question, uh, India. And um, I mentioned to Stefa that um, India itself is so large, has such an amazing diversity of of languages and everything. I mean, it's building people on its own. Feels like it should also probably have its own sort of continental word camp. Um, and I, you know, so I think it's awesome that you're all a part of word camp Asia, but it feels large enough that um, perhaps, you know, sort of an Indian word camp could be something that is kind of the same size as uh, we're camp, uh, we're camp, uh, so we can't Fear not. We've been talking about it all weekend, <laughs> and everybody that I've talked to about it is chuckling to themselves. See, I told you <laughs> he was in favor. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes, already discussing it. Yeah, awesome. if you want to learn more, that, that uh, hand wave was for you. Awesome. Shall we continue with another question? Yes, on this side. So, um, hi Matt, I'm Arun from India. Uh, I've been doing hosting business since 2009. And uh, frankly, WordPress gets a lot of bad rap of not being secure, not being fast, not being well supported, not easy to maintain because of the basically KLS hosts, which is sort of improving recently. What do you basically see uh, happening in the near future? And what more would you like to be seen? and as an opportunity for the hosting industry per se? Uh, well, first, thank you for hosting with this. Um, you identified it very quickly that as someone's, if you think of the everyday experience in most WordPress users, there, it's primarily mediated by the host. And you know, the host are taking on a lot of responsibility to keep their site secure, updated, you know, not just WordPress, but everything underneath it. You think of the operating system, the web server, the databases, all of these need to be patched and updated continuously. Um, the hardware underlying things, you need to run backups, you need to repair things when they're hacked. Like the host really is best suited and um, has a technical proficiency beyond most WordPress users to be able to address these sorts of things. Um, I think it's getting better also just from uh, the competitive nature hosting, which is, um, you know, as I'm sure you're very aware, a very competitive marketplace yeah. where there's a lot of folks really doing their best uh, to provide a fantastic experience. What we focused on in WordPress was really the auto-update and um, having updates 
and uh, backwards compatibility being something that we take very, very seriously. Uh, so I, when I've studied sort of platforms and operating systems, everything in the past, it's really about how you can update um, not just the core, but all of the components on top of it, the themes and plugins. And I feel like for core, we've gone to a very, very good place where, as you know, we can even push out proactive security updates to, you know, tens of millions of sites in hours. Uh, and we've done that to keep sites secure across the web. Um, I think that there's still a lot to do there, particularly around uh, plugins and themes. And I'd love to extend you know, some of our plug bounties, some of the way we do security, some of the way we do code audits um, to top 100 plugins, but really everything in the directory. Because when we have something in our official directory, we're also endorsing it a little bit, you know, not explicitly, but we're sort of implicitly saying like, hey, we're hosting this. So just like you hosting someone's WordPress, um, you're taking a little bit of responsibility when we host a plugin or theme we are taking a little bit of responsibility for it. This is also some place where we have a number of code scanning tools and other things we've run uh, in the past. So like when we become aware of a certain type of vulnerability, we can actually scan the entire plugin repo, work with developers to update it, or if a plugin is abandoned, sometimes we even update it ourselves. Um, in the future, I'm actually very, very excited about AI enhancing this. So just like I talked about, I feel like AI is gonna make every developer, designer, basically everyone a lot more efficient and productive. Each person will be able to do a lot more uh, with these sort of uh, increased AI assisted tools. Um, I'm very excited that when we can start to run sort of code AI scanners and things over the entire repository, both the core, but also all the extensions to WordPress and how that can help us improve the, the quality of those. Um, for the folks in the audience who are theme developers or plugin developers, the most important thing, thing you can do is just have people be able to trust updates. And I know that's so hard. Um, and with the plugins I'm involved with, including WooCommerce, we've made mistakes there in the past, but uh, there's nothing more important than someone, you know, looking forward to that update button or even better yet, us being able to just without even uh, anyone needing to think about it, just everything being on auto update. That will allow us to be the most secure and provide the best user experience over time. So uh, just to add a couple of things there, like updates is usually never the problem, never in the back of the mind of entrepreneur who's getting the website up. It's usually starts with performance and uh, sort of whether the website will be up or not. So those are the two things whenever we have a conversation between Shopify versus WooCommerce. So just a thought there, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for has been on my mind quite a bit. Um, you know, we've had some incredible gains there over the past couple of years, including with the doubling of PHP performance that came with PHP 7, 7.2. Databases are getting better. I'm actually really, really excited with the uh, SQLite work that's going on as a MySQL alternative for, I think, for many WordPress sites. That'll open up some very exciting um, kind of performance improvements, including things like being able to replicate sort of a SQLite containerized version of WordPress to the edges. So, you know, it automatically run 23 sort of points of presence around the world that are like a cloud for like CDN that allows us to accelerate things. Um, being able to shift actually the, the compute of WordPress to the edge um, is going to be very, very exciting for improving performance. And I think that, uh, you know, well one WordPress is with proper caching and everything set up is uh, one of the most secure and fastest things you can do. Um, powering sites is mission critical and as security critical as like the whitehouse.gov. Uh, and I think that part of what I always think about is, is how do we take the thing that right now we do for big enterprises or people spending millions of dollars and make that accessible to everyone. So I would love for anyone on a five or $10 a month web host to be able to have that same level of security and performance. So we're always looking at like, what can we do in core? What can we do in kind of the, the basic systems of how we work to, to bring those improvements and, and optimizations into the core software. Um, that's been one of the benefits as well. Uh, with, for example, with wordpress.com, we made the decision not to fork the software. Basically wordpress.com runs um, core WordPress, core WordPress MU. And in fact, uh, 
many times, I think we've fallen behind this a little bit, we'll actually deploy like beta or release candidate versions of WordPress to WordPress.com before the WordPress release. And we do that to get it on, you know, tens and hundreds of millions of sites, getting billions of page views to find any bottlenecks before it goes out in the core software. So that's something that um, Automatic's contributed. I know other hosts have done a lot of testing like that as well. And uh, something we hope we can do more of in the future. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. We have about 15 minutes left, so we're right. going to be quick on this side. Hello. Still talking. OK. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shilpa uh, from WP Cubicle. And what I really want to ask is, why aren't you here? But I'll, ask, <laughs> I'll, I'll stop on that. Um, so uh, in my past life, I mean, over the past 10 years, we've had a bunch of plugins on the WordPress plugins directory. And I'm sort of in the early stages of getting a new one there. Uh, but the things that made me nervous, um, you know, with early on starting on, still make me nervous, as in the lack of data, um, from the point of view of how many people are, you know, landing on my WordPress or plugin directory page, uh, how many of them are actually downloading, and how many of them are installing it every day, you know, uh, feedback like that would be tremendously useful for a freemium uh, plugin. And so, is there? I, 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 don't know if there's something going on in the background, but I would love to hear from you about that, please. So how can you make it easier for us? The truth is there is some work happening. So there is, um, you know, as we know on WordPress.org, we're very privacy focused. So we, but we are looking at sort of what's telemetry or more statistics we can share. Um, there was sort of some, because exactly what you said, I want to, <laughs> if people to be able to like think about how to optimize and and uh, their findability. Um, I would love like better feedback loops. Um, I think that we need to integrate the forms quite a bit better because users being able to, for example, I'd love for within WP Admin people to be able to uh, really easily leave feedback. So, for example, there might be users who install your plugin when they're turning it off. Like, is there something we can capture when they're turning it off that then can go back to wordpress.org, um, be shared with everyone, but also shared with the plugin developer? Um, I think those types of, I think in the user interface, there's little nudges we can do that could provide really great feedback loops. And if we do it right, it also provides uh, great data for people searching the plugin directory and trying to decide between you know, 10 different plugins doing the same things, which they should choose. Um, I'm very excited with, you know, in State of the Word, we announced our new taxonomy for sort of discerning between free plugins, solo plugins, uh, community plugins, uh, commercial plugins, and sort of canonical plugins. Um, I think that's also going to be in the directory a great way for both users to be able to uh, choose what they're looking for. Uh, and set expectations correctly, and also developers and plugin creators to uh, communicate what they're doing. Also, thank you for asking the kind of elephant in the room question, which is why I'm not there in Bangkok. Um, I, I really wish I was. And um, right now I'm navigating some family health things and I decided to prioritize staying here in Houston. Um, so I just couldn't make it, but uh, I really am hopeful that um, the, they are going well. So I hope I'll be able to travel again in the future and uh, hopefully before not too long. And so by the next time uh, where Camp Asia is, have you all announced the city it's going to be in yet? <laughs> I, I don't know where, but I, I'm very much looking forward to being there and uh, meeting everyone in person, shaking hands, taking selfies, all those sorts of things. That's one of the things that gives me a ton of energy. Um, and yeah, attending work camps is is really one of my favorite parts of the job too. <laughs> so I, I really am uh, looking forward to being there in person in the future. One ever thought you. that your your uh, WordPress uh, mentors were joking when we said we want you to put your family and well-being first. Like this is an example of why we like we do mean that all the way around. <laughs> uh, and so yes, and we again huge thanks to the organizers for helping us to make this work out anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Math. My name is Kitanan Samuri from Thailand. You can call me Moth. Um, thank you for having me to ask your question. 
Um, it had been around three years and a half that since your company Automatic acquired Tumblr. Since then, I saw some improvement on the platform, and I'm impressed that you can manage both platforms really in a great way. So my question is, after the acquisition, which aspect of Tumblr that influenced the development of WordPress, in, especially in the open source one? And also, what is your plan to develop both platforms even further? Thank you. Uh, you know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's taking a little longer than we hoped, but we are planning to switch the back end of Tumblr to be WordPress powered. So that's going to mean um, hundreds of millions of new WordPress sites in the world. And I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, WordPress is robust enough. It can do everything that the back end of Tumblr needs to do. Um, now, simultaneously, we've also been doing a business turnaround of Tumblr. So, you know, when we purchased Tumblr, it was losing. I think we publicly disclosed, you know, over $65 million per year. So bringing that to a break even, and sort of like a stemming that burn um, has been the first priority because of course we want Tumblr to be around uh, for many years in the future. And to do so, it does need to be at, at least break even, <laughs> hopefully profitable, but at least break even um, for us to really promise to its community and users that we'll be able to sustain it um, for, you know, many, many decades to come. Uh, as we're doing that, though, the turnaround is going well. Like you have seen a lot of platform improvements um, with the sort of tumultuous uh, nature of social media recently, especially with Twitter. We've gotten some huge influxes of users, huge influx of users. And uh, people are also just sort of appreciating the fun stuff we're doing, like with the polls feature and other uh, things we've been doing. Tumblr is basically blogging that's really fun. And so uh, I believe what it's inspired me to think more about, uh, both with WordPress.com and also Core WordPress, is how can we add little moments of uh, fun and delight? You know, something that we had um, in some of the early days of WordPress, but we kind of like have iterated our way out of is um, Easter eggs, uh, language that could be fun or silly, um, being celebratory. So, you know, for example, when you make a new post, can we do a fun animation there? Can we show like some confetti dropping or just things like that? I think that we have a lot more room to be opinionated and irreverent a little bit in some of the design of the software. Um, I know that feels less safe sometimes, or we can always come up with reasons why we shouldn't have those things. But I think it's really important to WordPress to have some personality as well and the very uh, core interface. Um, you know, it's in things like the Hello Dolly plugin and others, but how can we bring a little more jazz in the WordPress? How can we bring a little more of that uh, joie de vie of, um, of the fun that we have creating it? You know, we want to translate that into the fun that everyday people have been using it. Uh, the other thing that has been on my mind quite a bit is um, if I have to think of like an original sin of WordPress or something that uh, is a flaw in how the software has been designed. Um, I think it's our importance on titles. <laughs> I know this sounds kind of weird and, and fundamental, but really going back to the B2 days, um, something that distinguished WordPress from Blogger, LiveJournal, some of the you know uh, Frontier user land or scripting.com, some of the other early blogging platforms was WordPress made the title like you basically required it. And particularly when we started adopting, you know, our, uh, our way of doing permalinks um, that included the title as part of it, we, we really made it very central. Um, and it's kind of hard to publish something without a title. <laughs> and I feel like, I know it sounds subtle, but um, there's something kind of magical about what I would call a sides on my blog um, I forget what we might have called them when we did uh, post formats, um, but it's kind of what Twitter is, is microblogging. That idea of just being able to have an update that doesn't necessarily need um, a title on it. So uh, I've been talking to Matthias a lot about this and some of the Gutenberg team, but how we can make it easier, both in theming and the core interface, uh, to really make titles more optional. Because I just want people to be able to feel like they can post anything to their blogs. Um, a little bit how blogging has evolved over the past five or 10 years with people thinking a lot about SEO and findability and social media optimization, everything, um, takes a little bit of the fun and spontaneity out of it. 
I've experienced this myself in my own blogging. You know, I used to post hundreds of times per year. And now I think of it a little bit more like writing a college essay. Like I really need to do a lot of work to put something out there. And um, just if we can lower those barriers to entry and make people comfortable with posting just silly things or just posting a link or just posting a YouTube embed or something. Um, and not every blog post having to be like a huge thing <laughs> with a title and paragraphs and, you know, SEO optimized and a featured image and all that sort of, you know, kind of additional burden we put on post. It's great to allow that. And some blogs will do that and some posts will be that. But I think that kind of micro blogging is something that I want to make a lot more effortless within the interface. That's a great answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have five more minutes. So if you can get to the thing quickly, then we can, yeah. yeah. Matt. Hey, Matt, Bob, WP here. Oh, I do want to answer the question just very quickly. You said, is there something, you know, to announce or talk about here at Work Camp Asia? And of course I have something for y'all, <laughs> which is that we are, are getting ready to kick off a lot of phase three of Gutenberg. So, you know, we've been talking about this, gosh, five, seven years now. <laughs> <laughs> and phases one or two are in such a good place that, um, yeah, phase three is, uh, I would say the kickoff for that is coming soon. So keep an eye out and to remind people, phase three is the collaboration phase of Gutenberg. So allowing things like real-time co-editing of documents, pages, themes, blocks, entire sites, so people can be kind of working on it at the same time on different computers and see where, what's going on. Uh, editing workflows. I want to really improve post revisions. So there's a lot that's coming in um, inviting people to share a draft or submit comments, like all that kind of like uh, workflow and collaboration part is going to be phase three. And uh, blogging is definitely something more fun when you do it with other people and site creation and everything, <laughs> like many things in life, uh, the more the merrier. And so, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for phase three. Very excited to uh, say that that is coming soon. Hey, Matt, Bob, WP here from your part of the world. Question for you. I know your love of science, science fiction, and you're intrigued with time travel. If you had one point in time in WordPress history to travel back to, what would that be? When would it be and why? Oh, wow. That's First, think quick. <laughs> travel. There's, um, <sighs> You know, I, I would happily do the entire thing over again. <laughs> Lame so, answer, sorry. Matt. I'm sorry. <laughs> the day that Mike Little left the comment on my blog um, and that we started, you know, chatting with us, each other on IRC and, and started collaborating, uh, bringing in the volunteer. Like, I'd do the whole thing over again a thousand times. So, you know, I guess that's, that's when I would time travel back to. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. All right. Can we take one question or? Matt, are you going to be able to answer a question in 30 seconds? I'm going to take it as a yes. One more question. Yeah. Speed answer. OK, quick question. I'm Leo from Malaysia. I run an agency. The, the, the issue about I space in WordPress uh, that is about marketing WordPress. So we run agencies. We have other agencies coming to my clients telling them that WordPress is not secure, WordPress is not fast, which, is, which we know is not true. But the problem is we have clients moving from WooCommerce to Shopify, back to WooCommerce, and then Shopify, and they say, hey, WooCommerce is not secure. I say, really? When they know me, they say, uh, you, you don't know the right guy, right? You don't know the right agency. But, but overall, I don't know about other countries, but I know in Malaysia, uh, WordPress gets a bad rap. WordPress, people think WordPress is for cheap websites, not, not enterprise websites. And how, what can we do as a community to, to, to change the image of WordPress? What do you think? I love this question. My quick answer is um, nothing uh, is as good as showing examples. So doing excellent work and then raising the profile of those. And I know we've redesigned the showcase, but I really want to make this a lot more prominent. And I want every single Rosetta site, every single language and country version of WordPress.org to have a really prominent showcase. So by elevating the best examples of WordPress, I think that is better because we can, you know, say all day that 
WordPress is secure, it's performant or something like that. But being able to point to a site like whitehouse.gov <laughs> that switched to WordPress and, you know, when the war in Ukraine started, all the Kremlin sites got hacked, whitehouse.gov did not. Like being able to point to examples like that and say, well, if it's secure enough for <laughs> the White House, like it gets secure enough for you probably um, is really, really helpful. So examples is my short answer. And thank you. Yeah, thank I guess you. we're out of time. Can I just say thank you all? Like this has been amazing. Um, I can tell there's a ton of energy in the room. Um, I can. I've been watching the tweets and some of the live streams, and it's been so exciting to follow along. Um, this is really one of the best work camps I've seen yet, and that's a testament to the organizers and also everyone who's there. So thank you so so much. You want to take us home? Me? Say something? I'll finish this up. Do you want to? Fin you're finishing this so. up. Me? <laughs> yeah, you go ahead. Okay, my friends. Uh, thank you, Matt, for joining us all the way from the other side of the world. Thank you, everyone who is joining us here in the audience. You are wonderful. Everybody that has asked a question, um, thank you. Folks who did not ask your questions or that pre-submitted them and they didn't get answered, we will put out a blog post as usual. And you now have a 15-minute short break until your next session starts at? 10.30, I guess. 10.30. 10.30. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much.